Hi, this is Kerry Garrison with Multicopter Warehouse and DJI Colorado, an authorized retail location in Lone Tree, Colorado. And I'm going to show you DaVinci Resolve 14 and how to improve system performance. There's a number of different ways. Some of them are, are uh, going to make a huge difference in your editing, especially if you have a slower machine and you're trying to edit 4K footage. You're really going to want to know how some of this stuff works. First, let's go to our project settings and we can go through some of these items here. We'll go to the master settings and you know, if you're going to be editing in 1080, which I do, I don't output 4K. There's a number of reasons for it, including cropping and chroma subsampling. I get better looking 1080 than I had a shot at 1080. So I want to make sure my timeline resolution matches what I'm going to be editing it. So also on the master settings on our optimized media. This is, uh, we're going to choose automatically or what we want it to be. So I'm going to go with quarter. So I'm going to make pretty small optimized media. So it's going to play back fast. And the format is very important because you don't want a file size that's going to put even more strain on your computer. Now, if you're shooting in, you know, on a Spark or something like that, you can get by with a, a pretty small file size. If you're doing uh, Phantom 4 Pro, Inspire 2, uh, even a Mavic in 4K, if you're going to be shooting 4K uh, with a DJI product, your maximum bit rate is going to be 100 megabits. Typically, it's going to be 60 on the older machines, but it's 100 on the newer machines. Well, ProRes 422HQ can handle megabits. Well, we don't want that. It's just going to create a huge file size. If we switch to 422LT, it's capable of handling 135 megabits. So it's just a little bit faster or a little bit better than what the camera can do, which means we're not going to lose any image quality during the transition. And uh, I can turn on enable background caching after five seconds. But uh, for the most part, resolution quarter and my formats in 422LT, and I'm going to be good to go. Now, I've got some footage here. I'm just going to grab a couple clips here. Now, let's, let's see what the performance is. Now, this is an older, uh, about a 2015 5K iMac. If I play it up here, I can see the frame rate that it's playing at. So it's playing at 30 frames per second, which is what I shot it at. So I'm not having a performance problem right now. But as I stack effects, I might. And on my MacBook Pro, uh, I can certainly run into some, some lag issues. So I want to avoid that. So what I can do is I'm going to select these files here, right click, and say Generate Optimized Media. So this is going to create new files that are ProRes. It's going to be much easier for the system to handle. They're going to play back smoother. As I add effects to them, they're not going to make any difference. But I'm going to be working in real time on a lower resolution file. So it's really going to improve the performance of my editing. But when I go to export it, it'll take a little longer. I'm okay with that. Now to make this work, I'm going to go to playback, make sure I have use, op, used optimized media if available, and proxy mode is going to be quarter resolution. Now I can go ahead and open one of these, and my playback is still going to be 30 frames per second, but if I was on a slower machine again, that could make a huge difference. So I'm going to set some endpoints and out points here, and drag that down onto my timeline. We'll run over, we'll do a quick color grade on it. There we go. Make those colors pop a little bit. And if you saw in the preview there, I actually, looks like I have some prop shadow going on right here. Up in these corners. So I want to eliminate that. I'm going to go to my inspector and zoom in. zoom in quite a bit there. I don't want to go over two because then I'm, you know, I'm losing data or image quality. So recenter that. And now when we play it, 
Again, I'm still getting that 30 frames per second because of that optimized media. It's really helping to uh, play back nice and smooth and give me a good representation of what the image is going to look like, but it's playing a much, much, much smaller file. Now, another thing we can do is if we look at the timeline here, we have these large kind of thumbnails here. We can also turn those off and just make it flat if we don't really need to see where that is. And now, again, yet another performance improvement. So uh, if you're having problems, go ahead and go for this. If you're not having problems, don't worry about it. You know, uh, there's really no reason to do it if you're all just working on one machine. Now, another huge advantage of using this optimized footage and proxy footage, as it's called, is I can have on my laptop an external hard drive and I can create that optimized footage while the raw footage is still on that external hard drive. Now, once I've created that optimized footage, I can disconnect the hard drive and put it away, do all my editing with the optimized footage, which is taking much less space on my laptop on the internal drive. Then when I go to render it, I plug the hard drive back in so it can see that data and then it exports high resolution files. So that's another reason to use the optimized footage is for use with an external hard drive. But hope you understood what this is all about. It helps you improve performance and allows for that uh, external hard drive usage. Hopefully these tips will make a difference for you when you're using DaVinci Resolve. This has been Kerry with Multicopter Warehouse and DJI Colorado. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.